Hey, hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see the frequency response using discrete time Fourier transform that is DTFT. Here, a causal equation is given, a causal LTI system is described by the difference equation y of n is equal to 1 by 2 y of n minus 1 plus 1 by 5 y of n minus 2 plus 1 by 10 y of n minus 3 plus x of n plus x of n minus 1. Determine the frequency response of the system from minus pi to pi omega varies from minus pi to pi in the step of pi by 6 and verify the result using MATLAB programming. Today in this video we will solve the problem in the next video we will uh, develop the MATLAB program for frequency response. This is a difference equation given uh, by taking the DTFT of this difference equation. The DTFT of this y of n is y of omega. The DTFT of y of n minus 1 is e raised to minus j omega y of omega. DTFT of y of n minus 2 is e raised to minus j 2 omega y omega. DTFT of this y of n minus 3 is e raised to minus j omega y of omega. DTFT of y n is x of omega and DT of t of x of n minus 1 is e raised to minus j omega. So, keep in mind whenever there is a delay by one sample here it is a 1 omega, when it is delay by two samples here it is e raised to minus j 2 omega, when any signal is delayed by a three sample it is e raised to minus g j 3 omega. So, uh, let us bring the term of y of omega one side. So, these all terms are of y of omega. So, this y of omega these three terms will transfer on the left hand side. So, this all terms y of omega is on left hand side and x of omega terms is on right hand side. So, taking the y of omega common from the left hand side in a bracket what will remain here? So, in bracket it will remain 1 minus 1 by 2 e raise to minus j omega minus 1 by 5 e raise to minus j 2 omega minus 1 by 10 e raise to minus j 3 omega. From the right hand side we will take x by omega is a common then it will be 1 minus e raise to minus j omega. Now the frequency response ok. So, here we will get a frequency response. So, I will type here uh, the frequency response. The frequency response is given uh, frequency response is given by h of omega. h of omega is equal to y of omega upon x of omega. So, y of omega x of omega is transferred on this side. Then it will become 1 plus e raise to minus j omega upon this term will come on right hand side that is 1 this term is here. Now, uh, according to Euler's identity we know that. So, if we apply the Euler's identity, so we know that uh, the let us apply the Euler's identity e raise to minus j theta. So, if you type e raise to let us come into the equation editor ok e raise to e raise to minus j theta ok. So, let us take a theta from here e raise to minus j theta is equal to ok. So, according to Euler's identity it is equal to cos of theta cos of theta plus sorry minus j sin of theta. So, using this Euler's identity let us let us move further. So, here e raise to minus j omega can be written as cos of omega minus j sin of omega e raise to minus j omega can be written as a cos of omega 
minus j of sin omega but here the sign is a minus so in bracket it will become minus and this sign will become a plus it is multiplied by 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 cos of omega plus 1 by 2 okay so if i if i want to write down it separately you can write down separately in the bracket also or you can uh, multiply it minus 1 by 2 inside the bracket so what is e raised to minus j 2 omega e raised to minus j 2 omega is a cos of 2 omega minus j sin of 2 omega similarly e raised to minus j 3 omega is cos of 3 omega plus j, minus j sin of 3 omega so uh, here I will collect the real terms one side and uh, imaginary terms one side here the real term in numerator real term is 1 plus cos omega and imaginary term is a j sin omega in denominator these all co cos term and plus 1 is the real terms whereas all sign terms are the imaginary term which is multiplied by j now from this we have to determine the magnitude so how i can determine the magnitude so in a complex number we know that the magnitude is equal to under root real value square plus imaginary value square so in a numerator we have this is a real value so taking this as a real value so under root real value square plus imaginary value imaginary value is a sign of omega taking the uh, sin inverse of taking the sin omega square under root uh, in a denominator this is the total real term so real term under root real term square so here we have taken the square and plus imaginary terms of term square this is the imaginary term square so this is the magnitude response how we can get a phase response that is a phase angle so phase angle is equal to so in a complex number we can determine the phase angle as uh, we know that how to determine the phase angle in the complex number it is nothing but the tan inverse of imaginary value upon real value okay so in a numerator we have this is the real uh, real value 1 plus cos omega and imaginary value is j sin omega so that is a minus sin omega that is imaginary value tan inverse of imaginary value upon real value so in a denominator we have this term so denominator angle must be subtracted from the numerator angle so denominator angle is equal to tan inverse of imaginary term so this is the total imaginary term which i have taken in the numerator and this is the total uh, this is total uh, real term which is taken into the denominator so this will give you the phase response now let us plot it so we will take the different values of omega so here omega is taken here h of omega and angle of omega so in this equation we will put the values of omega varies from minus pi to pi in this equation also we will put the values of omega varies from minus pi to pi in the step of pi by 6 so let us start from the 0 0 then pi by 6 then 2 pi by 6 3 pi by 6 4 pi by 6 5 pi by 6 6 pi by 6 is nothing but the pi on the negative side minus pi by 6 minus 2 pi by 6 minus 3 pi by 6 minus 4 pi by 6 minus 5 pi by 6 and minus 6 pi by 6 so here the omega is varies from minus pi to pi so substituting that values of omega in this uh, phase response and uh, phase response and magnitude response we will get the magnitude and angle so you can calculate this angle in terms of degrees also here i have calculated this angle in terms of degree later on you can convert into the radiant or you can take the radiant in, in terms of radiant also so this is about when when we plot this okay so here i have taken this angle in in terms of radian for plot but here it is given in the degree mode it is nothing nothing a different so you can convert that above angle into the radian mode so you will get a radian mode so if, if you observe that uh, the magnitude is highest at at omega is equal to 0 radian per second so at a 0 radian per second when omega is equal to 0 radian per second magnitude is 10 and here you can see it is decreasing on this side decreasing on this side so phase response uh, magnitude response is always a symmetrical about the y axis so it is symmetrical about this y axis of h of uh, magnitude of h of omega whereas angle is having the anti symmetry here the angle is on positive side at 0 angle is a 0 again it is going on uh, the negative side for uh, omega varies from 0 to pi so we will validate this same result using uh, using matlab programming in the next session hope you understand this frequency response of uh, frequency response using dtft thank you